Welcome to Business Analytics Module 1 Topic 1. Today's topic would be Introduction to R. The learning objects for this session would be to understand why we would be using R, understanding installation of uh, Revo R, installing R Studio desktop version, understanding the nitty gritties of R Studio, setting up your working directory, installation of packages and libraries in R Studio, the Google page for R, and uh, the top eight packages that one should be knowing. Apart from this, we would be touching upon something like data mining in R with graphical user interfaces. And then with, uh, with usage of some of the uh, packages like Swirl, we will be understanding how would be using some of the tutorials in R. That would be the fun aspect. And this is what we would be doing today. Okay, now why are we talking about data overload, big data, right? So basically, if you see, shares traded on the US stock market on any average day is around roughly 7 billion. Data generated in one flight from New York to London, 10 terabytes. Now, this what we are talking is just something which has been recorded last time. This would have almost crossed double of what we are seeing on the screen. Data is too large, too complex for conventional data tools to handle, capture, manipulate, analyze and predict. And that's why we are talking about the four V's of big data. Uh, no, just to mention that what we are showing on the screen today is three V's. But in fact, it has moved on to the four V's of big data, volume, variety, velocity and veracity of the data. That is the quality aspect. 90% of the data was generated in the last two years. And that is what is talking about the quantum of data. Obviously, it has become huge, difficult to manage, a lot of value in it. That's why we need analytics. What is business analytics? Data on its own is useless, right? That's what we would term. How would we use historic data, do something about it so that it could help us into understanding future? Can we predict whether a plane might malfunction when it is on 30,000 feet? Can we understand much before when anything could happen like for example a manufacturing plant developing a snag can we understand whether a person would default when he is actually applying for a loan from a bank if we could do that by looking at our historic data yes we would be predictive in nature and that is where business sees value in business analytics it's about predicting by using your history can i look at your historic past and understand what can happen in future and that's why business analytics is there what are the key issues which business would try to resolve using analytics, right? So for instance, a bank might be interested in understanding how can we identify whether a customer might default, right? That's the risk aspect. A telecom company would be interested in understanding whether a customer would opt out of the services, for example, terminate the postpaid connection. A, a company which is into HR analysis might be interested in understanding which is the uh, resource who is going to put down the papers in the next two months, right? Because we need to do resource planning. Now, till now, it was only when a, an employee would put in his resignation, that's where we would understand. Analytics seeks to answer that question. Can we see this happening in future? So what are the things we can do about it? For instance, if it's a good resource, we can try to retain him, right? If it's not that good resource, we can try to churn that resource much before he takes that decision, right? So these are the few questions which business would be interested in analyzing. Obviously, there are a lot of things which analytics can do and we'll answer those questions as we get into the topics and handle case by case each of these cases. Now, why is there a growing need for analytics? Were we not accessing data before this? No, we were accessing that, but we had some issues. Issues were we couldn't store data. Today, we don't have a problem about storing data. We don't have a problem about platforms to handle this kind of data. And that is why you're storing more. Just think about 10 years back, if you, if you would have had gone to any IT store to purchase a pen drive, right, a flash drive, basically, the size of that would have been how much? I don't think it would have been more than one GB. Right. And that too would have been at a premium cost. Today, 32 GB would, a no, would be a normal, normal storage size. And imagine an enterprise, what size of storage it would be having. And obviously, we are not removing data. We are retaining data. And that is why now you're thinking, if I have so much of data, what can I do about it? And that is where analytics comes into picture. Right? So it's access to better tools and technologies, which helps us main, manage more data and in turn starts that ticking in our brain as to what can we do about it. That's why analytics. 
Now, when it comes to analytics, there are a lot of tools. We have SAS, we have R, we have SPSS, we have Rapid Miner. We have so many things like I can count like if you go on counting, it's more than 100 tools. Then why R? First of all, cost of ownership. It's something which has come out of the open source platform. R is basically a crowdsource platform. That means you, I and anybody who is working on it develops some package and he uploads it. A moderator will moderate it and when it is good to use, it is available for the whole world. Obviously, such a platform which is developed by everybody will be very big. The kind of applications it would have would be immense, right? And the cost, nil. There is no cost of the software. Versatility, it's the only software which can handle multiple platforms. You can run it on a Mac, you can work it on a Windows platform, you can use it for a bank, you can use it for a uh, telecom company, for a retail application. So the domain is also very versatile and you can customize it because you have access to the source codes. And that is why we go for R. Most of the data scientists today, roughly more than 51% use R. And if you want to really see how many of them use SAS, it would be less than 0.5%. That's how you should think of the scale. Moving next, we also think about why we would be using only R and not some application like SPSS, which is also available and somewhere sitting between R and, S, R and SAS. Sitting somewhere between R and SAS. We do that because you would always look at two of the extreme corners, either from the cost perspective or from the usability perspective. So SAS has some advantages, R has some advantages. Looking at the cost aspect, R is the winner and so we use R. Now talking about different aspects, R resources are usually one of the highest paid IT resource. This is what has come out of the DICE survey that was done in Jan 2014 and obviously if you see now it is more than that. Most of the languages used today are based on SQL when it comes to extraction. Furthermore, when you have to express that in terms of a model equation, you would be mostly using R. Many of the uh, meant uses of analytics are not easily done with SAS. R can do it. Just a small point. You don't have restriction in R in terms of the number of columns. You have a restriction in SAS. Right? So that's how you would think of it. Now, in terms of companies which are using it, Facebook, Google, FDA, all of them are using R and not from today. They have been using it from quite some time. In fact, if you would go back and try to think, even some of the big telecom companies in US have been using it from quite some time. And that's why we do this program in R. Now, installation of the uh, Revolution R open software, we'll be talking about that. So basically Revolution uh, R is a flavor, right? So something like if you talk about uh, Android phones, right? So if you're looking at the platform or operating system, so you have something like a vanilla flavor, right? Then you have these other flavors which come on that, right? So you have Android version, this, 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 and so on. So RevOR is something like that if you want to think on parallel terms. So it's basically an adaptation of your base R source code which is done in a module based environment so that for typical environment like maybe telecom maybe retail they have developed a little bit of graphical user interface which helps the user without actually going too much into the depth to analyze the data so that's about revo r right now this company has been overtaken by microsoft so it stands as a software which is given by microsoft so this has some key features so the present version 8.01 0.1 is based on the R 3.1.2 version. If you look at the actual R version which is in the market, it is 3.2. That's the current version. Because R is getting upgraded very fast, so the current version is about 3.2. Now the basic system requirements, now this what we are talking about is for basically for Revo R. We'll get to what would be the basic system requirements about Core R in few moments. The operating system would be Windows 7.1 minimum, 7.0 minimum, sorry, and 8.0 and above. In the server environment, it would be the 2008 R2, and the Mac version, it would be 10.9 and above. And if you're looking at something like a Linux system, it would be CentOS, which is the open source free version. Red Hat Enterprise version would be 5.8 and above. And if you're talking about Ubuntu, it would be 12.04 and above. 
from the processor perspective, it would be 64-bit processor with x86 compatibility architecture. And now, from the hard disk aspect, it would be a 250 MB requirement and the RAM would be 1 GB required. The recommended would be 2 GB. Now, let's talk about basic R. Basic R can be operated on any of the Windows platform. So, you have separate applications for Windows and the server platform. The recommended processor would be 64-bit but you can operate it on the 32-bit version also. The RAM size is one of the key things which you are looking at the basic R which would roughly stand at around 2 GB that is good to use because R would be doing in memory processing. Right? It is good if you have more RAM. Now we will talk about installation of the R Studio. Now what is R Studio? R Studio is basically an IDE that is an integrated development environment which lets you collaborate on your project. So at one point in time not one single person would be working on a project. So many people would be simultaneously collaborating and this is the platform which lets you do that. Simultaneously it makes it easy for us to extract data, look at graphics and all those things and that is why we would be using R Studio. So your base R would be something which will be actually processing everything. R Studio is going to be a layer about that which is going to talk to R. So you are not going to interact directly with R, you are going to install R, your R studio will interact with R and you as a user will be talking to R studio. Right? So the installation for that would be very simple, you will just go or first thing which you need to install is your basic R. So for that you would be going on your CRAN uh, server. Basically CRAN is your comprehensive R archive network which you can just google around. So just type CRAN and that is where you will reach your CRAN website wherein you will have separate installation files for the Windows platform as well as the Mac version and for the Linux platform it would be a separate exe. So you will run that first. So it is a very small executable file which you will need to download first and then run it. Once you do that it will start running in your system but we won't run that. Then you would be installing R Studio. for that you will just put R Studio, google it on, on, your, uh, on your Mozilla or your Google enabled frame. And once you do that you will be going on an R Studio web page wherein you can just uh, download the executable and run it and that is where your R studio will be installed. Now uh, as I was talking there are different versions so you have a desktop version of R studio which you should typically be installing if you are a learner. If you are somewhere in an environment like an enterprise you will be using the R studio which is for the enterprise. Again there are different versions in that one is a payable version which has support along with that. And one is the free to use version wherein obviously nobody would be supporting you if you raise a query. For example, if something crashes, whom would you look up, right? So that comes with the support part for that you will have to pay, right? So that's a separate version. Now we'll try to understand the basic construct of R Studio as to what the different panes stand for. Basically R Studio would look like when you first open it, so you will only see three windows, right? So currently what you're seeing on the screen, you're seeing four windows, right? So the top left quadrant is basically the script window or the data window, right? Here you would be seeing most of your codes. And if you try to open any data frame or any table in R, R Studio, that should also open on the same window. So this helps you to write the code, document them and reuse them whenever you want to. Now what you are seeing on the screen is the basic menu. So if you go on file, new file, that is the R script menu. If you do that, that is where your top left quadrant will come up wherein you will be typing your codes and seeing your data also most of the time. Here you can run your R commands and see what actually happens. Now there are different ways of doing them. So you can just keep your cursor on the actual line which you want to execute and press a control enter and it will get executed in the console window. You can just select a patch of code so that you can do a batch processing and press a control enter. And if you are not good with the keyboard, you can use the run button which is shown on the screen which does the same job. Okay, now we are talking about the environment window. So this is on the top right corner, right? So you can see that marked over there, it's the environment. So it basically lists out all the objects, data, functions, user defined functions, whatever you have created and called for in this window. So you can see whichever objects is loaded. Basically in a nutshell you can also say that this is your RAM which you are accessing. right? 
on the next tab just next to the environment is the history so whatever codes you're executing will be stored over here by default right? you can change these settings by going in the global options wherein you can change the setting so as the history is not recorded right so same like what you can do in your uh, in your uh, google enabled web browsers wherein you can deactivate your history but it's recommended that you keep it activated so in case if you are not saving anything you can go back and revert now we are talking about the console window. So what you are seeing on the screen is just a blasting of the console window. So here all your commands are actually getting executed. So whatever commands you execute from your script window is actually executed in the console. So this is where you are actually accessing your R, the base R. Now what we are seeing over here is the bottom right quadrant. So you have the first tab as the file, then the plot, then the packages, then the help and the viewer. So we'll be talking about the first option that is the file option. So it basically li lists uh, whatever files are there in your base folder. So you have a set working directory. So once you set that, this starts pointing to that folder location and will list out all the files kept over there. If you were writing something back on your hard disk, this is the exact location where it will get registered. The next tab is the package tab uh, after the plot. So before that, after the file, there is a plot. You basically, it's the uh, default graph device wherein you will be seeing all the graphs. And just next to that, you will be having the package tabs wherein you will be seeing the base default packages listed. Right. So if you're using this for the first time, you would be seeing a short list of packages. As you become an avid R user and you'll install more packages, this will get complicated and there will be more packages listed over here. The next tab which we are talking about is the plots tab so which I had briefly described which actually shows you the graphs whatever you're going to run in your console it will show the output of the graph over here so you're just seeing an example of a scatter plot over here and now we are going to the setting options so if you see on this uh, you can access this to tools options and that is where you get this option so you can do your general settings over here for instance you can set uh, what would you like as your default CRAN uh, replica mirror so you have different locations so like for example in India it would be IIT Madras wherein you have the uh, R server the CRAN server and similarly you have one in Canada and US and different locations you can set this to global option zero that means it will be in the cloud so you don't have to think about what the location is setting your working directory this is the next thing we'll be doing so to do that you have to just use in your r either in the script window or maybe in your console so whenever you execute a code in your console you'll be using directly the control button to execute a code that's the only difference but it's advisable to write all your codes in your script window so that it's documented so set wd that means set working directory is actually like setting up where do you want all your basic folders and uh, files to be written right uh, you would also observe one strange aspect that the uh, slash over here, right? The slash is either has to be forward or a backward. Now, depending upon the version which you're using, for so the current version, it's okay. But for the old versions, maybe you will have to follow an opposite way of writing the slash. So normally you write a forward slash, you might have to use the backward slash also, depending upon the version you're using. Now, installing and using packages, right? I spoke about some default packages which are present in base R, right? Apart from that, you will be using most of the packages which run up to the scale of more than 5000 listed on CRAN, which you might use as and when you require. Right? For, and for this, you can either go by the menu driven uh, option or you can directly write the code in your console. So if you type install.packages and list the package name. So for example, if I have to use a package called as AMAP, no, uh, we are not talking about what AMAP is, but supposingly if you want to use AMAP or as it is listed over here, SQLDF that means SQL data frames if you have to use the functionality which is present in this package you will just type install.packages and SQLDF or AMAP or any package which you want to install and just press enter if you are in the console window and if you are in the script window you will just press control enter and that would start installing the packages right?